Welcome to ICR Beast interview uh, series. Uh, today I have uh, Mr. L uh, Dr. Large Rodex. Uh, he's the head of the department and uh, uh, in uh, uh, Department of E Justice and Home Affairs and Enlargement in Hungary. Uh, welcome, you, sir. You know, Thank uh, you. Uh, <laughs> Institute's uh, uh, video series and uh, interview. Uh, my co first question would be uh, to you that can you briefly summarize? Your presentation or the main argument you were presenting. What I was trying to give was to give an overview of the enlargement package of the European Commission of 2013, which was just published last week. Mm -hmm. And here uh, I tried to give an overview of the strategic part of the document, which sets out the plans for the coming year, mm -hmm. and also the so called country report, so which uh, look at all the candidates, the potential candidate countries, and what, how they send it the process and uh, what recommendations the Commission is making towards them. And then also we can talk about the expectations of our now the council level that now based on this commission uh, report, the council will have to take some decisions in December mm -hmm. and what uh, we see what are the possibilities and what are the given positions for us on this issue. So that was the, my goal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so and my second question which which would be related to alignment that you know EU's alignment seems to be a continuous process. But as Croatia you mentioned that is a joint and uh, joint in the month of July, mm -hmm. and uh, Montenegro about to get the uh, get the we started, the, yes, yes, started yes, yes, and started the, the there are positive like response yes, coming yes, up yes. in December. I think mm -hmm. you mentioned about mm -hmm. this. So my my question will be that how do you see that the larger process in relation to population of Finland? The crisis are going on is still. Yes, you mentioned yes, that no, yes, the yes, crisis is going on. Like yes, 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 to, and mm -hmm. at the same time, the language is going on. Mm -hmm. So how the, the, like mm -hmm. Europe is, European Union is growing. But at the same time, the crisis is around. So, mm -hmm. how do you see this, these two things? Yeah, I mean, of course, the whole economic situation and the financial crisis in some member states it does not does not help because of the new world. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the move of public opinion is uh, closing in and more focusing on the inside and what is happening with the economies of unemployment, high unemployment. So, these are really times which are not very favorable to talk about these uh, topics or to make this or to take decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, you also have to see that, as you mentioned, Croatia joining started on the last year, starting with Serbia, hopefully in the coming months. Mm -hmm. So I mean, uh, it shows that uh, it is still not totally possible. So I mean, if you fulfill the conditions and if you there is the right setting, then it is still possible to, mm -hmm. to have positive decisions mm -hmm. by the member states. And, uh, so I think it's also important. And there's also, I mean, some people say that the whole, uh, I mean, the fact that still there are countries who want to join the EU show that I mean this is because of this I mean you have these discussions about the future and how this whole process and this whole process is in some member states and mm -hmm. how they want to be a member in the future or something. Mm -hmm. And but at the same time you see that there are still many many countries who are in line and who are waiting at the door of the EU. Mm -hmm. So I think this is also and Commissioner Fury always said that this is a vote of confidence and mm -hmm. for uh, on the side of the EU that, that this is a good idea and this is something that should continue. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, because that the next year will be interesting for the new EP and the new Commission mm -hmm. and also the, uh, the discussions about the like change changes in commission yeah, yeah. change and, and also so at the same time the whole mm -hmm. questions about how the institutional mm -hmm. setup might change or could change. Mm -hmm. uh, but the process is quite long. Yeah. And yeah. anyway, the yeah. negotiations are a very, very long process. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Talking about starting yeah. of negotiation and not finishing them. So, yeah. I mean, uh, and when we talk about enlightenment, we definitely talk about the progress reports. And reports include mm -hmm. the chapters. I think uh, now it's uh, 35. You mentioned that yes, there are generally 35. Chapters, but it depends yeah. on the countries that how mm -hmm. you know the commission actually happens. So my next question will be related to you know the, the progress reports and the chapter of rule of law and freedom of expression and the sexual minority, for example, mm -hmm. this uh, group is like uh, somehow getting, uh, you know, like you say, legal protection in different districts mm -hmm. in the United States and different mm -hmm. countries. Yes, at the same time, Europe is going on. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how, I mean, like, uh, how would you, like, elaborate with, uh, in, in relation to enlargement yes, yes, yes. Uh, how countries are actually, you know, like mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you, you have to see that, as you said, there are 35 negotiating chapters, uh, which cover the whole of the key. So there are, I don't know, chapter for agriculture, environment, uh, Freedom of the workers, and then there are two chapters which are so called rule of law related chapters. So, the one is the one that you mentioned, chapter 23, mm -hmm. judiciary and fundamental rights, and chapter 24, which is justice and home affairs. So, it's more the like the uh, protection, migration, so these issues. And 23 is a special chapter in that regard that 
there is not too, I mean there is not too much aki in this aspect still in the EU. I mean of, if, of course you have the Charter of Fundamental Rights and you have some uh, directives on anti discrimination, mm -hmm. but generally this is still part of the so called political criteria. So very often when the EU is uh, giving the, uh, this support positions to these countries, it is referring to Council of Europe Conventions or UN Conventions, so it's, so it's, it's really it's, uh, so the, uh, the legislation of different or agreements of different international organizations. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you also have to see that, uh, especially when, I mean, some of these really sensitive issues that you mentioned, sexual minorities, also in the, in, in between the EU member states, there is still no total consensus. Mm -hmm. the, and as you said, in some countries it's moving toward liberalization, but in some countries this is a much slower process, mm -hmm. or not all the process hasn't really even started. Mm -hmm. So this is also. So the commission, the commission must be feeling some, uh, like uh, facing some challenges regarding to this chapter or the, the countries who are in the European yes. member states. Yes, I think it's. I mean, I think nobody really is questioning whether this is something that. Uh, but uh, as I said in my presentation, that this is also one of the topics of the strategic document mm -hmm. this year, the mm -hmm. LGBTI rights, and uh, so it's, uh, it's something that. Uh, but I mean, of, of course, you also have to see that I mean, mm -hmm. many of these countries went through a war, lost people lost many parts of their territory, so it's still the mood is, I mean, not mm -hmm. totally in, uh, in important of the society. So, I mean, I mean, I think you need time to, yeah, to, yeah, to, to, to see that reason. Yeah. And I think also, the, okay, but it's more like my, co my personal view, because I mean, I'm not dealing with these uh, issues, but I mean, of course, uh, in the US, you see that, I mean, I think that they have to, I don't know, evolve hand in hand, but mm -hmm. the society is expecting how to deal with the because if you have one of them is, yes and uh, yes and my next question would be related to the like round of negotiations you mentioned mm -hmm. in your you know presentation there mm -hmm. so how often this round of negotiation actually takes place between the candidate state mm -hmm. and uh, the commission actually mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I would like to see that how member steps uh, member mm -hmm. states actually Mm -hmm. uh, their contribution in the round of uh, like negotiation. Mm -hmm. So, okay, for example, so yeah, yeah. 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 so uh, this procedure. Uh, yes. it's, uh, yeah. it's interesting because the accession negotiations are the uh, intergovernmental process. So mm -hmm. actually, it's not the EU that's negotiating, but it's 27 or no, 28 member states which are negotiating with another country of joining this institution. But because of the size of the acquis and the whole uh, technicalities, it is in fact it is the Commission who is negotiating with them, and the Commission is preparing these new positions which of course in the end the member states have to accept, but, uh, but they are the ones, I mean, where they will contact with them in the candidate countries because it would be possible to have always 28 plus one. Yeah. Yeah, so it's more the commission with, yes, yes. and the member states are through the commission somehow. And then when you have these IGCs with these are called intergovernmental conferences, when you have the opening of a chapter or closing of a chapter, and before that, the, the process looks like the commission is preparing the draft common position, mm -hmm. then the council has to adopt, it's the first, first it goes to working group level, and then it has to develop with the uh, ambassador level, ministerial level, mm -hmm. and then the IGC can take place. And then uh, there is the, is the presidency and the commission um, representing the EU, so the Rotary presidency is another Lithuanian presidency, mm -hmm. and then on the other side is the candidate country. And the timing, it depends how the negotiations are evolving. So I, as I said now that, uh, I mean, for example, with Turkey, we didn't have an IGC now for more than three years. Uh, with Iceland, when the process was before the elections, I mean, they had 27 uh, chapters open in, uh, in three years. So I mean, you can see that, that with them, we have quite often these IGCs. And then, but it, I mean, to be honest, this, the IGC itself is, is not quite the formality because all the technical, mm -hmm. I mean, you only go to the IGC once everybody agrees that this is okay for, for, for the Commission, for the Member States and the Candidate okay. Countries. And I mean, if, uh, I had to participate in quite a number of them because I was working at the Brussels mm -hmm. uh, program mm -hmm. until August. It's quite a formal setting, so it's like, okay, they read out what is the, mm -hmm. the, the chapter content, and they say, they agree, they say, they agree, and then they start again. With the, so I mean, the, the real work takes take place at the technical level mm -hmm. only for and and you only go to the IGC once mm -hmm. at the technical level, everything has been set to us. Yeah. As you mentioned, like about Turkey, so I would, I'm, I'm really curious, like uh, my uh, second last question would be that, uh, like, I mean, the process, you mentioned also in the presentation that the process started in 1963, I think it's one of the longest processes. Yes, 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 yes. And at the same time, I think they have just uh, still opened like 13 chapters. No, 13 14, or 14, 14 and they have closed <laughs> one chapter or yes, something yes, like yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. So, I mean, um, what do you see, for example, if I ask you that? Do you think that uh, Turkey will join in like the next 20 years? I mean, like in 10 years or in years? Ah, that's a million dollar question. I think I'm going to guessing because 
think it's, it depends on both sides. I mean, if we if you see the technicalities, uh -huh. and at the same time, uh, I would uh, I would put this question mm -hmm. in such a way that okay, we have conflicts like conflict that Turkey has conflict like two member states for like Greece and Cyprus. Mm -hmm. The events of 1974 in Cyprus, mm -hmm. and at the same time, you know, Greece is the motherland of Cyprus. So, I mean, do you think that Greece and Cyprus they are playing role at the commission level when? when they talk about uh, Turkey's new membership? I mean, the, the Cyprus issue is officially part of the accession process. So there is, a, it is, there is this Ankara Protocol and there's additional protocol to the Ankara Agreement, mm -hmm. which sets out that uh, there are certain chapters which you can only open, oh. pay chapters. Mm -hmm. There is a, a partial agreement between Cyprus and Turkey, and you can only close new chapters once you have this uh, agreement. So, so it is officially part of the process. So, so this is not something that uh, that really these countries are bringing into the process, but this is the EU position actually that that will be up on, on these issues. Uh, and I mean, I mean, in order for them to become a member, it is sure that this has to be this issue has to be solved because I mean, it, it is impossible to become a member in an organization when you don't recognize one of the other members of the same organization, especially in the case of the EU, where you are really, I mean, you give up important parts of your sovereignty and you have to accept decisions which are taken. So. I mean, on, on, and then on a more general question, I think I mean, it's very difficult to say, but it is for sure that it's going to be a long process anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, the EU will change a lot in the meantime, and Turkey will change. Yeah. Time, as it has already now. And, yeah, and, no, sure. and I think, I mean, there is a, this, it was a decision, even if it's a decision by the EU to start accession negotiations. So then, I mean, what sort of a certain legal obligation that this mm -hmm. process should continue? And, the, and I think it is in, in the interest of both sides that this process continues because I think both of Turkish of course, it is becoming a very important regional power now. It uh, also links to, the, to other regional powers and global powers. But, but I think in this process, it has been an important element that they have this process now going with the EU. Mm -hmm. So I think it's also in the interest of Turkey and also in the interest of the EU. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's an important European mm -hmm. <laughs> neighbor. And, and and also if you look at the economic numbers, but the statistics, mm -hmm. demographics, it's, 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 you can see that it's, it's not coming to power, so it's a so it's, it's difficult. Okay, so then uh, my last question would be that, uh, how would you see, like, uh, by organizing, uh, you know, such kind of, this kind of conference mm -hmm. on uh, such topic, uh, you know, like what you see, the prospect mm -hmm. of your opinion can contribute uh, in academic or society or something? I mean, what do you mm -hmm. see, what do you see by organizing such kind of, Conversation by ICRP is a question. I think it's a <laughs> <laughs> of course it's a very good. I think it's a very nice event. I'm very happy that I was invited, and uh, I, I know that I mean now it all, especially for the crisis, but even before that, I mean there were many discussions ongoing on the future of Europe and where this whole integration uh, story should end. And I think it's very important that you have contributions from all levels and all parts of the EU, all parts of society, that, that this debate is really open. I think this conference is going to be held. People start to think, and then of course it has to feed into this whole <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so so somehow it's very uh, mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's very useful. Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thanks so much, uh, Dr. Dex. And it was nice to have you. Thank you. <laughs>